This tutorial is sponsored by Skillshare. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint white armor, as well as showing you how to glaze and paint chips and scratches. Welcome to Tabletop Ready. My name's Michael, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint the Tau Commander in the color scheme of the Viola set. I'll put the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. And if you want to help support what I do you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon which I'll also link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and allows me to keep improving the content I create for you and I massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people as well. So one of the first questions I had for this kit was, is it poseable or do you have to build it in a certain way? So you can absolutely pose this miniature however you want, but it will need some modification. You can see here that there are little tabs that slot into holes, defining how the commander is positioned. All you'd have to do to change the pose is to cut these pegs off. When I built the Commander, I built it in sub-assemblies. This makes painting so much easier and allows you to get the details you wouldn't be able to if the miniature was fully assembled. Make sure to go and check out my Getting Miniatures Ready for Painting tutorial to learn how I do it. There's a big contrast between the dark and light colours on our battle suit, so I chose to undercoat the miniature with grey sear spray. This is a great mid-tone colour to use that still allows me to get a nice solid white easily. So I've been on this YouTube journey now for a couple of years and I pretty much had to teach myself everything. But you don't know what you don't know. So I thought it was about time to see if there was a better way of doing things. And thanks to Skillshare, this tutorial sponsor, I've learned that there is a better way. A recent course I've been absorbed in is Charles Carter's Adobe Premiere Pro for Beginners, Editing Efficiency and Getting Started. Charles Carter is great at explaining and breaking down the steps of each subject that's easy to get your head around and pretty quickly. His courses also give you the chance to learn from a real professional who's worked in studios and around the world and has nine years experience using the many Adobe Creative programs. And some of the things that you can expect to learn from this course are learning the basics and being better organized within Premiere Pro because it can get really overwhelming. How to improve your video quality and something I've always struggled with, making myself sound better as well as all the amazing courses teaching you all about design and using creative programs. Skillshare is a great place to learn about entrepreneurship, business, marketing, productivity and so much more to get you started in a new venture or maybe you just want to learn a new skill. As I always say, the best time to get started with something new is today and Skillshare is a great place to get started. And if you want to check out Skillshare and see all their amazing content for yourself, you can use the link in the description and the first 1000 people to use the link will get a one month free trial with Skillshare. And let's get back to painting. Through this tutorial, I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your Tau Commander painted. And to make it easier to follow along with, I'll break up this tutorial into different chapters. In this first section of the tutorial, I'll be going through the basics of getting paint on your miniature and painting the base colours for the battle suit. So believe it or not, I've never actually painted a Tau battle suit before. So I'm really looking forward to painting this Tau commander. I just figure that it's just a giant space marine. But this is a good example that, even if you haven't painted something before, as long as you know the basics, you can confidently apply the same techniques, ideas and steps to anything you paint. It's just a case of choosing what colours you want to use. The first colour we're going to get painted is all the areas we want to be black and the black I'm using is a bad and black. And whenever you're painting it's a good idea to thin your paint first of all and I find using an equal amount of water does the trick. As well keep your brush moving and try not to go over any areas you've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. You'll see that our first initial layer hasn't covered very well, so we'll have to go in and paint another layer. Painting this way gives us a smooth, solid colour without losing any of the detail. 
Just remember to let each layer dry completely before repeating the process. Continue painting layers until you're happy you have that solid colour. So for me these are the absolute fundamental basics for painting miniatures. And when I learnt these few basic steps it massively improved my miniature painting straight away. And that's after already being in the hobby for 15 years. The next colour we're going to paint is Dawnstone. And I'm painting this on some of the armour panel sections around the armour. I'm pretty sure you can paint whichever panels look good, but you can do what I did and check out the Games Workshop website for reference. We're now ready to paint the main base colour. For the white armour I'm using Corax White. I'm using this because it gives great coverage and it's kind of an off white which is going to make it possible to highlight. I've also chosen to paint these colours in this order because I know I'm going to be messy and painting grey and black over white is easier than painting white over the grey and black. And when you're done, spend some time neatening up, making sure you're happy with how the base colours look. I'm now going to show you how to get the armour finished, which involves some glazing and chipping. So straight away in this tutorial, I'm going to be going through what some people would consider quite advanced techniques, but that's no reason to avoid them. In fact, by the time I've finished showing you how I do them, you'll be wondering what all the fuss was about. Let's start with creating some definition on our battle suit, which is going to help the details stand out more. And we're going to do this by painting Gorthor Brown directly into all the recesses and around details. This is commonly known as a recess shade, and using this technique allows us to create definition without affecting the main colour, unlike a wash. Usually you would go for a darker tone of colour you want to shade, but this miniature a brown is used which gives the impression of age and dirt. And this same idea can be applied to any colour, it's especially effective with black which you normally wouldn't shade. For this miniature I would only apply this to the white and grey areas though, but if you did want a more dirty weathered battle suit then carry on and recess shade the black details as well, it's up to you. Before you move on to the next step, there's a chance you've been as messy as me and the white will need tidying up again. Now we've created that definition, let's make our white armour look more interesting and I doubt anything that white would stay clean for very long. To do this I'm first going to thin down Bane Blade Brown with an equal amount of Lamy Medium. Doing this makes the Bane Blade Brown more transparent. Pick areas on the armour where you think there would be some dirt and grime build up and we want to make sure we paint an even thin coat. This is what we would call a glaze. Even though we use quite a thin mixture for our glaze, try not to think of it as a wash. We tend to use washes to create definition. A glaze however is mainly used to tint an existing colour or to create a tonal variation in a more controlled way. You can build up the glaze if we want it to be stronger. Just make sure to do this slowly, letting each layer completely dry before glazing again. If you feel like you've overdone it, you can do the reverse and create a Corax white glaze, helping to soften the Bane Blade brown glaze we just did. So glazing is one of those techniques that you'll see a lot of high level painters using. That's because glazing is so powerful in the way that you can use it to blend, create variation and create interest on your miniatures. So it's definitely one of those techniques that's worth learning and practicing. So now it's time to paint some highlights and because we're going to be doing quite a lot of this I want to go into some detail showing you how I do it and what works for me. Whenever I'm highlighting I like to keep a brush separate so I know I have a nice point to it when I come to use it. And when thinning you paint for highlighting I find I don't use as much water as I normally would when layering as we won't be applying multiple layers. I then remove some of the paint on some kitchen paper which is going to help us keep control of our paint and to prevent thick blobby lines. The most common highlight you'll see and the highlight that is mostly used is the edge highlight. So let's start by highlighting all the white details and armour panels using some white scar. And to make painting this highlight easier you can use the edge of your brush and run it along the edges to paint the highlights. If you have places you can't do this then just take your time painting thin lines along those edges to create the highlight. Let's move on to highlighting the grey areas next using a two stage highlight. 
We're first going to paint a chunky highlight using Administratum Grey. This wants to be quite a thick line, so you're still able to see it once we've painted an edge highlight over it. You want to paint these lines along any edges and around any details. This highlight is really going to help define and start to bring out any details and panels of the armour. Now you want to use some Orthwin Grey to paint an edge highlight where we just painted our chunky highlight, remembering what I showed you when highlighting the white areas. Highlighting using two stages really softens those highlights, helping the overall look to our armour. You should now be able to easily highlight the black details on the battle suit. Eshin Grey can be used for the chunky highlight and Dawnstone can be used for the edge highlight. You could actually go a step further using Orthwin Grey to paint a spot highlight. And this highlight is used to further bring out any edges and corners you want to be more pronounced as if sunlight was glinting off these edges. So I know that was a lot to get your head around, but it is achievable with enough time and practice. And when you do get good at it, your miniatures are going to look so much better. I think we're now ready to finish up the armour, and to do that I want to show you how to paint chips and scratches. Using Gawthor Brown, I'm painting little scratches along all the edges on the white and grey armour where we painted our highlights. Think of it like you're painting a broken line, and I find treating this the same way you paint highlights really helps give you that control. And if you're feeling adventurous, then you can also paint little scratches and marks on some of the flatter areas of the armour. Always remember to build this up slowly. You don't want to overdo it because I know how easy it is to do that. Don't expect to finish a miniature in just one sitting. In fact, something this size would usually take me multiple sessions over one or maybe two weeks, depending on what I'm painting. Remember, you only need to paint something once, so it's always worthwhile taking your time with. In this last section of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint everything else to get our Tau Commander finished. Let's start with any areas and details that are painted red, and for this we're using Mephiston Red for our base colour. Then apply some Norn Oil directly into all the recesses and around details to create some definition. To highlight, start with a chunky highlight using Evilson Scarlet. And we can now finish the red details with Troll Slayer Orange for an edge highlight. For any metals that need to be painted, start with some Rune Lord Brass. Then give these metal areas a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. Finish with an edge highlight using Canoptech Alloy. Let's now finish up and get any lenses painted, and then I'll show you how to paint a glow effect. Paint any lens first of all with Stegodon Scale Green. You now want to paint the bottom right third of the lens with Temple Guard Blue. Paint a thin line of blue horror next around the edge of the lens. Orth 1 Grey is then used to paint a little dot in the top left corner and a fine line in the bottom right where we already painted to give the impression it's a reflective surface. You could stop here but you may want to create a cool glowing effect making it more sci-fi. Start with a chunky highlight along any edge next to the area you want to glow with Temple Guard Blue. Thin this down with a small amount of Lamy Medium to make it more transparent. Now paint a thinner line over the Temple Guard Blue with Baharoth Blue. I like the edges with Blue Horror. Finish up by using Orthwin Grey as a spot highlight and paint this in any recess where the glow would be coming from. The only thing left to do is assemble all our parts together and I use super glue for this so I don't ruin any of the paint with poly cement. So I finally got to paint a towel battle suit and it's certainly not going to be my last. This was a lot of fun to paint and I got to use a lot of different techniques on this miniature and it was really satisfying to see the results. So let's see how it turned out. Our Tau Commander is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel so make sure to go check those out. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You 
You can also support me at Patreon, which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content, and I'll see you in the next video.